Hello and welcome to My Seeker Math Tutor. For this video, we're going to work on finding higher derivatives. So, in a lot of my other videos, you know, we go over the different rules of taking a function and finding its derivative. But, you know, after going through that process, you notice you simply just get another function. So, what's to necessarily stop you from taking a derivative of a derivative? And what we'll find is that uh, there really is nothing stopping us. We can go ahead and take derivatives of derivatives. So let's go ahead and pick up some notation you'll see as we're doing these higher derivatives. The derivatives that we have been doing is essentially just the first derivative. So we go through and maybe apply one of our rules, find the first derivative. If you take a derivative of this derivative, you get what is called the second derivative. And you'll often see now two tick marks next to your function. Now if you take a derivative of this one, now you're at the third derivative, so we can put three tick marks. And if we take a derivative of that one, now we just kind of abandon our tick marks and we say we're at the fourth derivative, or f to the four of x. And there's even really no reason to stop there. You could keep doing this process as long as you want. Uh, the first few, we usually do use tick marks, but say after about four, we usually just replace that with a number. This is not saying powers. No, what you're really saying is that uh, you are taking derivatives of your functions, and that's how many you need to take. In terms of your derivative operator, you can also express how many times you should take the derivative. So here's our familiar derivative operator, d over dx, and here's what it looks like for the second derivative. Notice how I added a 2 in the top and a 2 in the bottom. And you can imagine this happening because you have two of your derivative operators, and they're starting to stack up on one another. So two d's in the top and two dx's in the bottom. Okay, continue on from there. You could put, uh, say, your third derivative, a 3 in the top and a 3 in the bottom. Fourth derivative, a 4th in the top and a 4 in the bottom. And again, continuing on from there. Okay, so let's just play around with finding higher derivatives of a few different functions, just so you can see uh, how easy this process is, and how it, it's really just using all of your derivative rules that you've learned so far. Uh, so let's go ahead and find, say, four derivatives of f of x equals 4 times x to the fifth minus 3 e to the x. So I'd start off and I'd say, okay, let's go ahead and find our first derivative. So using my power rule, bring down the power, I get 20x to the fourth minus the derivative of 3 e to the x is 3 e to the x. Okay, and that guy's done. But why stop there? Let's find another derivative. This would be the second derivative or the derivative of this one. So just like before, we bring down the power again. So now we're at 80x cubed minus 3e to the x. Okay, let's do it again. 1, 2, 3. So third derivative, bring down the power. Uh, let's see, 3 times 80, that'd be 240x squared minus 3 e to the x, and why not? Let's go ahead, fourth derivative. So we take down our power, 480x minus 3 e to the x. Now, what this example shows is that when you're working with polynomials, that power will just keep reducing every time you take a derivative. But there do exist functions like e to the x that don't necessarily get any simpler as you take more and more of their, their derivatives. Uh, let's look at another example of a function and take a few derivatives of that one as well. This one is 3 times the square root of x plus 5x. And if you want, you can imagine, say, the square root as x to the 1 half. It usually makes doing the derivative a little bit easier. So doing my first derivative. I was thinking of bringing down this power, so the 1 half would multiply by the 3. Now to get 3 halves x to the negative 1 half, plus the derivative of 5x would be 5. Okay, not too bad. Let's do another derivative. So this is the second derivative. And I'd bring down this power, so now I have a negative 1 half multiplied by a positive 3 halves, so negative 3 fourths x. This power gets reduced again, so negative 3 halves, and the derivative of a constant is now gone, so that's just 0. Alright, let's find one more of these things. Third derivative, 
So now think of taking this power, bring it down, multiplying it out front. Negative times a negative would give us a positive. So positive 9 eighths x to the negative 5 halves. And we really could continue on from there, just continuing, you know, bringing down the power. And this one's kind of a neat one. You'll notice that the uh, signs actually alternate. We'll get, a, say, a negative in our derivative here. This will be positive. The next one, this negative will come down. We'll be getting another negative in there. It just keeps flipping back and forth. All right, so that's pretty neat. Uh, let's go ahead and try uh, our higher derivatives on one more example. And let's go ahead and throw in a product rule, okay? In this one, I want to find a couple of derivatives uh, for 2x squared plus 1 multiplied by 4x squared plus x. So in order to do my first derivative, I recognize that I really have two functions in here. Maybe call the first one something. I'm going to call it u. And call the second function something. Let's call that v. That way I can do my product rule. u v prime plus v u prime. All right, let's see what that looks like. So my first function, just as it is, 2x squared plus 1, multiplied by the derivative of this one. That would be an 8x plus 1 plus. Now we do our second function, just as it is, multiplied by the derivative of the first one, 4x. And then that one's done, OK? So now we can take two derivatives of this by doing the product rule twice. So I'm going to call these u and v again, even though I probably shouldn't since I already uh, used a u and v once before. But I don't think I'll get into too much trouble. So let's call this a u and a v. And apply our product rule just to these two pieces here. So my first function, 2x squared plus 1. Derivative of the second, that would simply be just an 8 plus. Now I have my second function times the derivative of the first, 4x. Okay, so that takes care of derivative of those two pieces. Now let's also find the derivative of these next two pieces, again by recognizing the two functions that are really being uh, multiplied together. So let's see. Our first function just as it is, 4x squared plus x. Derivative of the second, 4 plus the second function, 4x, multiplied by the derivative of this one, I get 8x plus 1. Okay, so we've actually found two derivatives, and uh, all you would really have to do from here is start cleaning things up a bit, maybe by distributing and uh, combining as many terms as possible. Uh, let's go ahead and do that just so we can finish the problem. So I get a 16x squared plus an 8 plus 32x squared plus 4x plus 16x squared plus 4x. See, now I need to distribute this one in here. Plus 32x squared plus 4x. A lot of different things in here, a lot of different things. Uh, here are all of my x squareds. So we'll be sure to combine those ones. Let's see, I also have some x's. We'll combine those ones. Looks like we have a single 8. So that will just, I guess, be all by itself when we're all done. So I get a 96x squared from combining all of my x squared terms, plus a 12x comes from both of uh, these x's and then there's my 8 all by itself. So there's two derivatives of our original functions. So if you can just remember that uh, with these higher derivatives we're taking derivatives of derivatives and apply your rules carefully you'll be just fine. If you'd like to see some more videos please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.